Hey, Rob Fitzgerald, welcome back. Um, spend a couple of minutes talking about fairly common uh, drugs that can cause serious toxicity. Um, so aspirin and acetaminophen. Um, aspirin, we still produce billions of tabs of aspirin every year, and so we do see overdoses of aspirin. Um, it's quite a good drug. It has um, causes pain relief. It causes fever reduction, and it's also anti-inflammatory. So really good clinical uses for, for aspirin. Um, we think about its toxicity being characterized by a metabolic acidosis, but that really depends on when the patient presents. And so we'll review that real quickly because it's reasonable to think about and it helps you remember what happens with your acid base and compensations. Um, a fairly specific sign of salicylate is ringing of the ears or tinnitus. Um, patients become hyperthermic. Um, at some points early on particularly, they hyperventilate. Um, later on, they get CNS depression and their, their breathing slows down. Um, generally suicidal for acute overdoses. Sometimes patients get into trouble if they're chronically on aspirin um, because the toxicity of chronic dosing is at actually lower concentrations than acute toxicity. Treatments are going to be really pretty much supportive, so hydration, glucose, supplements, hemodialysis if necessary, um, so the bicarb to help treat the, uh, the uh, acidosis. So just uh, a quick review of, of acid-based disruptions in salicylates. Um, initially, if, if patients take an overdose of, of aspirin and their concentrations are rising, it actually stimulates the respiratory center. So patients start to breathe hard. And if you breathe hard, you blow off your, your CO2. And if you blow off your CO2, you develop a respiratory alkalosis. And the compensation for a respiratory alkalosis is that you start to dump bicarb renally. You're trying to maintain that 20 to 1 ratio of bicarb of base to acid um, for the Hendels and Hasselbach and, and maintaining your pH somewhere around 7.4. However, um, uh, if the concentrations to continue to go up, you actually get CNS depression. And if you get CNS depression, you actually stop breathing and you get a buildup of PCO2, so you get a respiratory acidosis. So it sort of depends on when the patient presents as to what their acid base status is going to be. So that's the respiratory side. If we think about the metabolic side, um, you're going to develop a metabolic acidosis because salicylates get, con get converted into salicylic acid, so they're organic acids. They're going to contribute to the acidosis. They impair renal function, which is excreting acid to try to maintain acid-base balance, um, and it uncouples oxidative phosphorylation. So you get buildup of both lactate and pyruvate, which are organic acids, and contribute to the acidosis. So on the metabolic side, we get a metabolic acidosis, um, but it can be a mixed picture uh, depending on when they present. Acetaminophen, uh, again, widely used. Um, it's it's analgesic and antipyretic, but not anti-inflammatory. So that's really its, its primary pharmacological difference between salicylates. Um, in overdoses, peak concentrations take at least four hours, and so sometimes it may be even 10 or 12 hours. But we, we start to think about assessing toxicity about four hours post-dose because the drug is still being absorbed. And if we, if we try to make interpretations too early, um, concentrations could be rising after we've sampled. Um, one of the ways to, to think about toxicity is, you know, acetaminophen is a drug that is cleared by first-order pharmacokinetics um, until you saturate the enzymes, and that's what happens in overdoses, is that you saturate the enzymes, so the apparent half-life changes. You know, a normal half-life is two to three hours, and if you look at, you know, how long is it taking to, to clear acetaminophen, that can give you some evidence of toxicity. So if you have a longer half-life, you're going to expect some toxicity. Greater than 12 hours, then you, if the patient's not treated appropriately, then they could uh, develop a hepatic coma. So you have to take grams of, of acetaminophen to get toxicity. Um, so it a, has a reasonably safe index, but people take you know, 10, 50 grams sometimes. So they take massive overdoses. 
Um, kids, uh, it seems to be a reasonably safe drug if they're given it in the appropriate doses um, because they, they seem to be a little bit resistant to the toxicity. This is the, uh, the RUMAC diagram, and it's used to help assess the potential for toxicity, and you'll notice a couple of things about this. One is that on the x-axis, it doesn't start until four hours, and so again, we're, we're trying to wait to see, you know, have they reached the post-absorptive state, and so we start to think about, you know, assessing them some hours after they've uh, ingested the... Um, this is the line, the RUMAC Matthew line, is where toxicity is expected, sort of the safety line, the treatment line is a little bit lower than that, just to sort of give us a, a margin of safety. And so what we're talking about here is giving NAC and acetylcysteine, mucamist is the, the antidote, and it's completely effective if given um, in the right time frame, so an, an amazing antidote. Um, so this is what acetaminophen looks like. Um, it gets metabolized uh, through conjugation to form either a, a glucuronide or a sulfate, and, and under normal situations, this is the primary pathway, and, and things are fine. What happens is, in an overdose, you saturate these enzymes, and so this, this becomes a substrate for a mixed function oxidase to form this imidoquinone, which is very electrophilic. This is a, an electrophile. It's looking for electrons. And so fortunately, this is being formed primarily in the liver, also in the, in the kidney and in other tissues, but primarily in the liver. Um, in the liver, we have glutathione that has soft hydro groups that, that are very electron rich. And so as long as we have glutathione, we're protected. And that's why acetaminophen goes through several stages and you don't get toxicity until you've wiped out the glutathione. So as long as glutathione is around, we're inactivating this toxic metabolite and everything is good. However, when the glutathione is depleted, and that's what happens in an overdose, is that glutathione gets depleted. This is so reactive that it never makes it out of the tissue that forms it. Um, and in the, in the liver, we get centrolobular necrosis because that's where it's being formed. And so it's, it's attacking uh, the tissue, uh, and in particular the hepatocytes. And so initially acetaminophen is going to cause increases in the transaminases, hepatocellular damage markers. And so we're going to be lysing hepatocytes, and they're going to be leaching out, and we can look at ALT and ASTs as an indicator of, uh, of hepatotoxicity. Uh, so that's a quick, overdose, uh, quick uh, review of overdoses of acetaminophen and salicylates. Thanks very much for tuning in.